So they're still there. Those desires are still there. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Don't let it happen. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. The complete opposite. Don't give your body as an instrument. Give it completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have a new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of the God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Paul wants them to understand we do not stay with our sin or treat it as no big deal. No, instead you give your whole life to Jesus, including, by the way, your body. His temple where he now lives, where his spirit resides in us. I think a great example of this is King David. What did David use to slay Goliath? You would say, well, a sling, yes, but he used his hands, his body. To slay Goliath, to ultimately defeat uh, what we would maybe see as evil, right? One who is against God, the Philistine army, against God's purposes and plans. And there's King David rising up to defeat Goliath and prevail God's purposes and plans. That body, that hand, that arm, right? When he goes around and he throws the stone, and that same body was once used to commit adultery with Bathsheba. His eyesight, right? His eyes of unrighteousness. He he, used the same part of his body to fall into great sin that would destroy lives ultimately. Him and others, the same body. And Paul is saying, Don't go there. Use your whole body for God's purposes. Every single part of you. I wrote this into our notes just to keep this into our minds. We either use our bodies as a tool for evil or a tool for the Lord. That is your mind. That is your body. That is your talent. That is everything that is a part of you. He says, don't don't use it to serve the sin. No, use it to serve God wholeheartedly, everything, every part of your being. Use it to serve him. And then Paul's going to jump to another illustration. He's talking about baptism and how that is. And, of course, they would have understood that context. But then he jumps into slavery, something very prevalent in their time. And so he says this in verse 18. Now you are free from your slavery to sin. And you've become slaves to righteous living. Remember, Paul at the very beginning says he's a slave to Christ. Or at the very beginning of Romans chapter 1. But now he's saying you also are slaves to Christ. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery. To help you understand all of this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led you even deeper into sin. By the way, just sin just leads to deeper sin, and deeper sin leads to deeper sin, until you get so deep you don't even know you're in sin. Take you out, sure. 